Private property is one of the central tenets of anarcho-capitalism. Here in Hong Kong, as we discussed earlier, the government owns all land. Yeah. Um, could anarcho-capitalist society perhaps operate without private land ownership? Could land management be passed on to private agencies? That's a little complicated. The private agencies would be private, so it would be private ownership. You could certainly imagine a system where most land belonged to firms and they leased it rather than selling it. In existing capitalist societies, after all, uh, some people live in houses on land they own, and some people live in apartments on land that they rent, and some people live in houses on land that they rent. So there are a lot of possible property arrangements in a market system. But if there is no government, there can't be a government to own the land. To make it so that uh, so society actually owns, but it is used by the most efficient users in the market. But what does society owns mean? It uh, sounds as though you're getting towards the view some people refer to as geolibertarianism, which comes out of the work of Henry George, who was a 19th century economist, who in general was a libertarian, but his argument was that land, because it was not produced by human effort, was a suitable thing to tax. And therefore, he wanted a society in which the only thing that was taxed was the site value of land, what the land would be worth without development. And you're, it seems to be making arguments along those directions. And there are some libertarians who make those arguments, but it's hard to see how you can implement them if you don't have a government. And it seems a whole lot simpler to have a system in which land belongs to individuals. They can sell it, they can rent it, they can lease it, and so forth. Yeah, I was just thinking in terms of Hong Kong because the land is so scarce and I guess the government owns it and I guess if we had private property... It would be less scarce because you would have multiple uh, owners and there would first there'd be an incentive to make more land, which has happened in Hong Kong, of course. Noticeable parts of Hong Kong are in made land where they filled in the water. Uh, and in addition to that, if you had people competing for land, you would tend to get more efficient uses of land. Uh, and so forth. You were, I don't know much about Hong Kong, but you were telling me earlier that in practice almost all the development is done by a small number of firms that work together and have an effective cartel over the industry. And if that's right, it's unlikely that they're using the land in its most efficient fashion. Uh, in particular, in a situation where the government has control over land, it is in the interest of landowners to keep other land off the market. So the one pattern you get, for example, in England is green belts, where you have a city where land is very valuable, and there is a ring of land around the city where you're not allowed to build housing. And I suspect, though I've never researched it, that those restrictions are supported by the landowners inside the city because the value of their land would fall if people could build more. And I suspect that much the same is true in Ca where I live in the Bay Area in California, the area where San Francisco and San Jose and such cities are. I have at least been told that between 80 and 90 percent of the land there is unavailable for development. Some of it is state parks, some of it is zoning restrictions of various sorts and so forth. And my guess is that those rules are in part maintained by existing owners of the land you can develop, which is quite expensive, not as expensive as land in Hong Kong, but more expensive than land in most places, in part because the supply is held down.